Hello and welcome to Real Chats with Real Student Athletes. Here uh, with me today, I have Frank Del Garcio, and he is part of the Ryder University baseball team. Um, so before we get into our questions and get talking with Frank, I kind of just love to introduce uh, each athlete and just give a little bit of a background on who they are, where they came from. So Frank holds two state championships at two different high schools, Allentown High School and the Hun School of Princeton, where he saw playing time at first base, outfield, and pitcher. Currently, he's a senior pitcher and a first baseman for Ryder University's baseball team coming off a season where the team won the NCAA or the team won the MAC conference and then appeared in the regional for the first time in 10 years uh, in the NCAA tournament. So welcome, Frank. Thank you so much for um, coming on today with us and just to have a real chat about uh, mental performance. Absolutely. I'm really happy to be here and, and kind of talk about my personal personal experiences, as well as kind of helping athletes kind of adapt some of the, the principles that I use. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so first we'll go into, um, I know we spoke briefly about your experience with mental performance coach, Brian Kane. Um, so I hold his certification. I'm, on, I'm underneath, you know, his mentorship. Um, but he was back, he was here at Ryder in uh, 2019, you know, and ironically, right before the, the pandemic hit, you know, you guys are on a roll with mental performance and uh, what better time than to have mental performance coach, you know, uh, not that you knew it at that time. Um, but can you talk about the experience and how did it bring emphasis um, on the importance of mental performance training, his workshop that uh, was held at Ryder University? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, 2019 was my sophomore year and it was a, a very kind of exciting time uh, just because I was really hungry to, to start for a, a, or compete for a starting spot. And I really didn't expect to have an experience like, like the team did with uh, Mr. Kane. And we all, that was like one of the first things we did as a team, you know, we had a team meeting and then coach Davis uh, shared with us that we we're going to be visited by a mental uh, performance coach. And that was kind of one of my first interactions, I guess, with someone with that level kind of with that experience and that kind of re and that resume, honestly. Mm -hmm. And it was really cool to see the different sides of and the mental aspects of being an athlete from, you know, kind of just planning out your daily schedule you know, to really doing a lot of things to really prepare yourself uh, to perform at a high level. And, you know, especially as a baseball player, you always hear, you know, baseball is 90% mental, but, you know, if you really break it down, you don't really actually, a lot of practices for the mental side of the game aren't really emphasized as much. And I, that's why I think what you're doing is really amazing because I'll, I wish I kind of got, you know, maybe in high school or, or different, different experiences with it to get more acclimated because I really feel the more you prioritize your mental, the mental side of the game, the more you're really kind of setting yourself up for the real physical opportunities that you have in game. And the more you kind of have that experience, the better off you are prepared in, in your preparation. So Mr. Kane, really, he, he kind of introduced a lot of concepts to us, uh, at least for me, uh, e plus R equals O. And that's just the event plus response equals outcome. And, you know, it's it, the event is just the game or wherever you are. The, the response is kind of how you are to that, you know, your adrenaline level, how prepared you are. And the outcome is just kind of a, accumulation of both those things and how well you are prepared is going to be usually how, how well you, you perform. Mm -hmm. And um, just kind of really shying away from excuses. You know, everybody has something going on and really just focus on getting better. And like nobody, he used to say, nobody cares, get better. And I, that's something that really resonated with me because, you know, everybody, like I said, everybody's got an excuse, you know, everybody kind of fights through their own, own problems or own kind of thing to, and really just kind of prioritizing getting better in your process. And that's another thing you really stress upon to us is having a process oriented mindset instead of a, a goal, a short-term goal oriented process. That was really important. And and yeah, I mean, there are so many, so many different things that he kind of has kind of, I could go on for, for a very long time, but it was awesome. It was really yeah. Cool. And uh, I, I love that you're able to share and uh, especially, I mean, you guys had like an opening session with him where it was all five teams, um, softball, baseball, men's and women's basketball and wrestling. Um, but then he was able to break down in different 
bit silos with you guys and break down into teams and kind of give you all those tools like you had said and I, I call it the mental performance toolbox like you have all these tools to pull from just how are you using them and I think one of the words that I want to emphasize that you said is purpose like doing everything with an intention and purpose um, and I think that's that's key and the purpose um, you know of those is the intention and the purpose and then like you said the process and I think having a process, being structured. Um, I think a lot of people look at that and say, oh, well, being structured is not me. I, I don't want to do, you know, be so, you know, concise with everything I do. I feel like trapped where I feel if we can switch the mindset, structure brings freedom because you're able to get things done in such an effective and efficient manner that now we're not wasting time on things that are wasting our time. Um, and another thing I think you said um, that I really like um, and from Brian Keene is like, don't get, are, are you going to get bitter? Or are you going to get better? You know, like, are you going to get bitter on the moment? Um, and I think like you had said, the E plus R equals O is like, you have an event and what can you, and your response is what can you control? And then that's going to be the outcome. Um, so if you want to get bitter about it, then your outcome's going to be bitter. But if you want to get better about it, then the outcome's going to be better. So um, I love hearing all the things that Brian Keene um, talked about in his sessions um, because it's, it's everything that I'm living and, and breathing in my daily life. And it, it seems like you are too, and it, it's really been helping you, um, you know, through your season, whether it's pre-season, in the season, post-season conditioning. Um, I think all the tools help, um, in every aspect, the perform, uh, the preparation, the performance, and then the, pro the progression through, through everything that you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. I would say also, like you saying with the, the toolbox, yeah. um, when we originally spoke, you, you, you mentioned kind of Brian Kane and it's like, it was, it kind of took a moment to actually realize how much of an impact it actually had moving forward because some of the things are just kind of like, they get ingrained in your brain just because of how, how much they make sense. And mm -hmm. it's, it's awesome to see like, you know, some of the things that are Brian Kane's principles and obviously your principles now as well that they really just have the long lasting effects that it's like, you don't even think that you're doing it, but you actually are. And I think that's the coolest part. Like after a yeah. while, it really just becomes second nature. Yeah. And, um, you know, in the little tiny things that we say, like the E plus R equals, oh, it's, it's really little statements and I, it's aphorisms, which I like to, and that's what they're known as. It's just little statements that just have big meaning, right? But, and it makes you think. And, and I think that's what I love about mental performance coaching is we can take a simple, equation or a simple process or a simple thought just elaborate on it so much and it makes so much sense just like you said um so brian kane gave the team a lot of strategies i know we kind of you know flew through a bunch of them right now um but obviously it's up it's up to the team to implement them you know you have brian kane for what two and a half days he's there he's throwing all this information at you but then you know it doesn't work unless you work it so um you know can you talk about some of the ways that Coach Davis and Coach Borchowski, which is your pitching coach and Coach Davis is the head coach, um, implemented, how do they implement mental performance training at your daily practices? So prior to my freshman year, I'm sorry, prior to my sophomore year, we didn't really uh, emphasize this as much. Definitely a lot of um, the concept is like shadowing, right? So shadowing is just basically in a drill or any kind of practice setting that you're not actually participating. Like, you know, you're waiting to, you're in line to go or something like that. It's just actually um, visualizing the rep. So as it happens in your, in your mind, um, it's, it, you are getting multiple reps, even though you're not, up, you know, and it, it's actually, you're expediting the amount of reps you get. And in our practices, I know coach Davis uh, with the position players, he basically, he, he really emphasizes this, you know, he makes it, you know, whether it's just kind of putting your hand up, you know, back or forth uh, on a, on a base, base running read or kind of, you know, just in your mind, just visualizing a ground ball in a certain setting. And it's really, it's really a great thing that I never really paid attention to. If I'm being completely honest, I never really yeah. put too much um, weight on it, but kind yeah. of doing it, it really helps. And it really, you get so much more out of practice than just doing the, the couple reps that you get because there's 25 for, you know, 20 guys doing kind of the same thing. Another strategy is, and this is for pitchers as well, um, is the red light, yellow light, green light. And it's that the significance of that was really important for me as well, because 
you know, there's going to be situations where you're, you're quote unquote in green light, right? Everything's going perfect. And, you know, you're able to, you're, you're feeling in control. And then there's yellow light where like, uh Oh, like for me as a pitcher, it's like getting behind a batter too well, you know, and in, in a, in a bad count and you, you know, you miss, miss with a couple pitches. So it's like, uh Oh, I feel like I'm losing control of this at bat and red light is would be again, for a pitching standpoint, you know, letting up a double or like letting up a hit, you know, in a big spot. So it's all about kind of, getting to a place, going to something that is really, um, that like your routine, maybe it's like, uh, we emphasize, uh, um, excuse me, uh, Mr. Kane emphasized like really looking at a, a, a piece on your glove or, you know, a landmark and really coming back to center and not letting the moment get too big and, you know, really breathing through whatever is going on for better and good situations, you know, okay situations and, and just times you're, you're feeling like you're losing control. And I know also from a pitching standpoint, we do shadow bullpens uh, at least a couple times a week. The days that we're usually not actually throwing off mount uh, in the fall, you know, we, so that it entails us visualizing a situation, whether we're doing well, we just let up a couple runs, whatever the situation may be and putting ourselves actually in that, in that situation and really battling through the adversity in our minds and how, how are we going to react to that situation? And, kind of really seeing it before it even happens. And yes. so that way in the game, when that ha does happen, it's not like, uh Oh, like, Oh crap. Like this is the first time I'm in it. And it's very comforting knowing that you've theoretically been there, even though you necessarily haven't, but it's your mind doesn't know truly the difference. And that's something that coach Davis also really stresses to us. Yeah. Um, a lot of, a lot of key, a lot of key words that you said, and I, and I kind of want to go and uh, unpack those, um, like you said, uh, the mind doesn't really know the difference. And I think when it comes to pitching, right, you, you know, you're only so allowed so many pitches a week because of arm, right? You don't want to tire out your arm. So when you're doing, and you said mental reps, right? So physically we can do, you know, a set of reps and those reps are going to get us better. Um, but when it comes to arm care, you got to be careful. So the next best thing is let's do mental reps. And like you said, with shadow bullpens, you're getting into situations where, you know, you, you're thinking about a certain count in your head, or you're thinking about, you know, somebody just gave up a double. Now, what do I do? You know, so you're going through the motions and it might not be physically sitting there on the mound and throwing a pitch, but you're, but you're going through the actual um, situation. And I think that's the key. And like you said, because once your mind goes there once, it's going to go back there again, you know, muscle memory. And that's what we're doing. The more reps we do, the more it comes to the forefront of our brains and the more we're able to pick it up. Um, and I like said comforting, you know, because it, it's, it's, it's about being able to recognize that, hey, we've been there before, I've gotten through it, now let's do it again. And I think that, that uh, there's so much that resonates with uh, the mental performance on, uh, you know, in every athlete and in every sport. It's just finding those techniques that work for you. And it seems like shadow bullpens are working for you um, well, and also um, just getting into the point where um, you're maybe playing those, those, uh, those plays over your head or those pitches or those pitch counts. Um, so I love it. I love hearing all of it. And I, and I, and I love that we're, you're able to say it in a way that other athletes can now take away from it and say, Hey, you know, this guy's doing it. Why can't I do it? It's the same thing. And I think that Absolutely. that's, trust me. I know it's a little cliche, but if I, trust me, if I could do it, definitely other athletes out there can do it too. And it's just something that becomes eventually after with enough practice, second nature. Yeah. Um, and, you know, a lot of times when I'm in my workshops, I, I, I say the little statement, you know, everything happens and they're all saying, you know, for a reason. And I think that that's like the most, you know, that's the most popular thing that comes to your mind. But what I try to emphasize here is that everything happens twice. And like you said, once in your mind and then once, you know, out there in the playing field or in action. Um, so getting those mental reps in um, really allows you to put the action, put it into play. Um, and having like that feeling of, Hey, I've been here before. I know what it feels like. Um, because the mind really doesn't know a difference between what's actually there or what you're doing in your mind. So, um, I guess maybe kind of break down shadow bullpens. Can you just kind of from the, the start to the, to the finish, like 
what are you doing as a, as a player? And then what is the coach expecting from you? Like, are you actually on the mound? Are you off the mound? Are you behind a, another uh, pitcher that's actively going right. But you're kind of shadowing him or how does that work? Kind of break it down. So, so these baseball pitchers can understand, you know, what it looks like. So basically like I'm a relief pitcher. So for me, uh, I would like, usually we all take turns. So like during either batting practice or different portions of practice that we're not necessarily, we're shagging, but we're not necessarily involved in the drill. Uh, we all kind of take turns. And because there's a couple mounts, we're, we're lucky enough to have a, a few different mounts, uh, both the visitors and the, the home side, we break up. And it's basically, I go onto the mounts, like I just was called in from the bullpen. And I envision a situation. So usually I, I think I pitch around or I pitch in situations where I have runners on base. So I'll usually come in and it'll be a first and second, no out situation, because that's usually the situation where it's very important in the game, usually to get, you know, hopefully keep those runners at, at bay or even get, you know, a double play ball or something like that. So I step onto the rubber as if there's a, a batter in the box. Now for me, I'm left-handed. So I would like to either mix, mix it up between lefty and righty and just try to visualize how I'd pitch that batter and and try to induce a ground ball or, you know, kind of get something happening where in a game, in a real life game, it would cause momentum for our side, you know, and momentum's huge in baseball. So that's definitely something I try to focus on. And from there, it's like, I will just kind of do a dry rep. So I won't, obviously, like you said, with the pitch counts and, and everything like that, and just arm health, uh, we don't actually throw, but we just do a dry rep. So it'd be like our, our, my full pitching mechanics without a ball, uh, I don't personally like to do this, but some guys like to use a towel so they still feel the whip and you throw a pitch and then you literally like you would get the ball back from the catcher. You catch it, go back. And for me, I've developed a routine which kind of for better or worse, it kind of just resets me for the next pitch, you know, no matter how good or bad the, the last pitch was. So for me, it consists of kind of swiping on on the rubber itself, taking a deep breath and looking at the D I have for for my last name. And on my glove that's printed and I just look at it, take a deep breath and I set back on. And so I, every single time I do a shadow or a dry rep on the, on the mount, I'm doing that routine to get in the habit of like really make, like emphasizing that routine, but also recentering myself for the, well, eventually will be a real game. And for, and it's, it's funny because you would think, oh, well, it's real easy in those situations to envision yourself just doing great, you know, getting a double play ball or, or getting a, strike, a big strikeout or a big moment. But what Coach Wachowski and Coach Davis really stressed to us is, you know, make it as game-like as possible. So, you know, you gave up a hit, you walked a guy, you know, so just like to really acclimate yourself to the real-life stresses of baseball. And that is something that I've noticed with myself I've pitched the best on a, on a weekend if I really prepared well enough during the week and just kind of having those extra reps really aids to that. And it's something that I really, it's some like a really big part of my routine on a daily or weekly basis, I should say. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you, that's phenomenal. The way that you just stated it, I think that that paints a clear picture for any baseball player, um, but also pitcher. I mean, you know, let's unfold some of that. So you are obviously getting reps in and you're going through the whole motion. There's just not a ball in your hand. Like you said, a dry rep, right? Um, and you, this is all throughout practice um, and you are doing your uh, recognize, release and, and refocus drill. So you're basically recognizing that you're either in a red light, green light, yellow light. You're um, uh, refocusing. Um, so that's your swiping your foot, you're taking a deep breath. Deep breaths are huge. That's like your trigger to like, all right, last moment is done. Next moment, here we go. And, um, and then being able to look down at that D and that basically means like, Hey, what's important now? The next pitch is important. Nothing else. Let's go. So I think that that is, is truly, um, a process that everyone, every student athlete should have as a, as a recognize, a release and refocus routine, um, which I love yours. And, and I think, um, you know, if, if other pitchers don't know what to do, just, just use yours. And then if once they kind of feel comfortable, then they can create their own. And I think that that's what, that that's the beauty of it is like, you don't have to recreate this thing in your head, just use, to use what somebody else is using and then critique it once you feel comfortable um, being able to 
to adopt your own. Um, Absolutely. And so I also want to add, too, yeah. so, sorry, yeah. Rafael. No, go for I it. I just wanted to add, like from a position player standpoint, because I, I know, mm-hmm. you know if any baseball player does this. So uh, another thing we actually utilize at practice is we used to have three plates, but now we have like one that's literally color coded with red, yellow, and green. And that kind of symbolizes going through the same stimulus. You know, maybe it's not as, you know, get actually in game, but it still re- like represents about the same thing. So I know during batting practice, we have like a separate station for that as well, where uh, position players and hitters could really just kind of refocus, practice their routine kind of the same way that I can or as pitchers can. So that's definitely a great way to just kind of really, I would recommend really just finding your routine, something that really helps you. Like, and, and you said the release, the response, and um, really focus on something that like gives you comfort, like just that you could go to that to kind of help you calm down in a big moment. And just practice that as much as possible. So, like for me, like I said, it's the it's the the swipe on the mound, it's the deep breath, and it's the look picking up the D on my glove. For a position player, it could be the batting gloves. So it could be readjusting your batting gloves. It could be looking up at the foul pole, and it could just be kind of taking a deep breath, staring at a letter on your bat. So it's just kind of picking and choosing something that really calms a a specific player down, and, and just kind of puts them in the best position to to hopefully do do well. Yeah. And kind of to, I love that it could be as simple as that, like the foul pole line, like the foul pole, like just looking at that, um, knowing that that's your trigger to then maybe look at your glove or pick up something on the bat and just say, take that deep breath and, and refocus and, and basically just clear the mind, right? Clear it of what just happened because that doesn't matter anymore right now. Now we have to take the next best step. Um, and I love that all of this is happening in practice. And I think I heard you say, um, you know, while you're going through all of these pitches and you're, you're going through all these positive um, pitch counts maybe, but, and, you know, getting comfortable with that, because if you're, if that's what you're seeing and if that's what you're doing on a daily basis, day in and day out, then then that's what you're going to produce. Right. And, um, but then also, you know, going through like adversity is going to hit you and, and you're not going to know when it's going to hit you. Um, so having those adversity, um, at bats or adversity pitches too, um, and bringing it back to to real life moments is, is crucial. So that's amazing. Yeah. I love that. I love everything that you just said. And I, I can't wait to share all this information with all athletes, but especially pitchers and baseball players, um, because I, I really think this really does help. And, and like you said, pick your process, pick your routine, know what it is, do it at practice, because the only way you're going to do it in the game is if you practice it on a daily basis. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, so can you maybe share with me, I always ask all the student athletes, maybe a, a favorite book or a favorite story or a YouTube that just gets you pumped up for practice or a game. And, and I say, get you pumped up for practice too, because like we had just talked about, um, doing it every day, having that, uh, and like you said, momentum, like if you're doing it every day, it's kind of like, you don't want to miss a day. So, um, what's, you know, what are some things that you go to, to kind of pump you up for practice? And then that energy level in practice will then, um, resonate in the game and just transition into a game. Absolutely. And that's, that's a very important, it's very easy for players, you know, to kind of go through the motions of practice, like you said, um, but it's really important to, to prioritize practice just as you would a game, you know, just that level of effort, that level of focus, you can't just pick and choose when you have it. And that's something really important that something I've adopted as I've gotten a little bit older, a little bit more mature, because it is a definitely a maturity thing to like, really like, Oh, you know, I'm going to practice or it, instead of I have to go to practice, I get to go to practice. And, and that's something that as soon as you kind of adapt that mindset, that definitely helps. But for me personally, it's not really a video or like a, a YouTube video or a song or anything. Well, that helps sometimes. But usually I just kind of, if I'm having a bad day or other feelings that I have in my life, and I just bear, bear with me a little bit because it's a little, <laughs> it sounds a little funny, but um, anything I kind of have going on in my life, I just kind of try to channel it, either whether it's positive things in my life that I have a lot to look forward to, or, you know, maybe a negative thing, you know, something stressful they always say that it's kind of leave that outside of outside of the field before you walk in and go to the dugout. But for me personally, I like to kind of just make the conscious decision to try to channel it into a really positive way. So for me, positive ways, instead of, you know, 
getting angry and taking out on somebody, I just try to take it out uh, on the baseball field, whether it's on the mounds, whether it's in a drill, you know, just like going a hundred percent full speed. It's just kind of like all driven by whatever kind of feelings I have for better or worse. And I feel like that for me is more sustainable than just kind of like, I always heard that this, the, the quote motivation is fleeting, you know, but discipline is forever. And I always think that no matter the video or anything like that, you know, it's, it's kind of, it's going to go away. It's going to, you know, you watch it one too many times. It doesn't necessarily have that effect, you know, for, at least for me. And mm -hmm. if I could take outside, you know, kind of stimulus outside feelings and just really try make a conscious effort to channel it and get it out in a positive way that I'm going to be a better baseball player because of it, because I'm going to have all this energy, all this enthusiasm, whether it's, driven because of good or bad things, you know, bad test score, or like a anxiety for a test coming up. And it's a, it's something I found for me that really works. And it's something that I really pride myself in doing because it's, it, it's a lot better than just kind of letting stuff build up in your stomach, yeah. to, you know, in, in your, in your body. So I, I definitely enjoyed kind of rechanneling it. If that makes yeah. sense. No, that makes perfect sense. And a, a lot of times, um, you know, I hear some athletes say that, you know, they have anxiety or they're, they're fearful or, you know, they're, they don't know what to expect. So they get, you know, clammed up. And I say, well, use those feelings as fuel. And that's exactly what you're doing. You know, you're using these, these feelings and you're, you're, it's fueling your, your insides to go at a hundred percent. Um, you know, even if you, you know, a lot of p times people or athletes say, well, what if I just don't have a hundred percent that day? I'm like, okay, well, what percent do you have? And they're like, I don't know, like 80. I'm like, okay, then go hundred percent at 80. You know, like if that's what you have, then go hundred percent at 80, you know, and that kind of makes them think like, okay, then I'll just go hundred percent at 80. Like there's no, you have to, like you said, like, it's not that you have to go to practice is you get to go to practice. And it, it's usually just changing one word in a sentence to just flip it from a negative to a positive and using your feelings um, off the field and fueling them for on the field, I think makes perfect sense. And um, it's, but it's really whatever works for you. And like I said, you can take strategies and skills from other players and adopt them as your own or use something of your own or a combination. It, it really is whatever works for you. Yeah, absolutely, I agree. I mean, I know a lot of my teammates, they love music. Like they just always have the headphones on. You'll see them walking into, like whatever team we're playing with headphones on or, or like you watching YouTube videos on the bus, you know, it's just kind of, it, it all is a matter of preference and there's no one size fits all. And I think that's really exactly. important that, that you just said, it really yeah. just kind of varies from, from person to person. Yeah. So I think as we were hitting the 30 minute mark, so, uh, you know, I, I, I could sit here and talk to you all day, honestly, about this because yeah. it, it is so exciting. And I, and I love hearing that mental performance is working for you, you know, not a cliche. Oh, you know, you, you got to do this and it'll work. no, it works. So, and I, and I, that's what I want other student athletes to realize is that um, it's not about mental performance, coaching and skills, doing them because you're weak. It really is like amplifying your strengths and like, what are your strengths and um, using the, the mental performance toolbox to, to just reach in dig deep and use everything that you can, um, to just make yourself better. Um, so is there anything that you can say, um, you know, to student athletes that are just like, eh, I don't really know about the mental performance game. I really think like, it's not for me. Like, I'm not that person. I'm not Mr. You know, Mr. Or Mrs. Positive. Like I can't do this. Like, it's not me. Like, what would you, I guess, kind of like wrapping up this session, like, what would you say to someone that is maybe on the fence about working with a mental performance coach? So I would say that it's, it's not necessarily always about positivity. It's, I mean, it's, oh, it is about being a good teammate and obviously and being an energy giver. And, but at the same time, you know, mental performance is something that you really can't take lightly because even if you were the most physically fit, you know, the most well-prepared physically for your sport, there's always a mental side of it that, that can easily get in the way. And, you know, I've always had times maybe, you know, when I used to hit a little bit more, that I would kind of freeze. And I would be like, oh, you know, why am I kind of freezing up? Why am I locking up in a big moment? And it's because, you know, mentally I just wasn't prepared enough. And that is just reality of it. You know, as, as you go on higher and higher and have aspirations of playing sports at a really high level, 
you know, everybody around you gets better. So it's like the less, yeah, and everybody physically kind of levels out and whatever advantage you have kind of really dissipates really quick. And this is the, the opportunity that you have to really make yourself stand out and really be in a, in a place that, you know, when things aren't going well, you have something to go to and, and prepare yourself to get through that. And a lot of players, you know, especially as you like come in from high school to, to college, mm-hmm. they're used to being the best player on their team. And as soon as they get to college, they realize, oh, well, everybody's the same. You know, I actually I'm behind and mental performance and like having having the, the priority and the, the discipline to actually put a pri- put priority on that really makes a difference. And no matter who you are, like it, it'll always catch up with you. It always catches up. And every person I've seen at the college level has some kind of routine, has something to go to, has, you know, and, and the, the people you see really strive and, and do well are the ones who really prioritize it. And I would just say, do it. I mean, yeah, you just kind of have to do it because yeah. like it all, it all, at the end, it's whoever, it's not who's better, it's who's better that day. And that comes mm-hmm. from preparation, mentally and mm-hmm. physically. Yeah. I couldn't have said it any better. You, that was excellent. And I, and um, I really hope that, you know, student athletes, um, you know, hear what you're saying and are listening to what you're saying and how much of an impact it's made on your baseball career as a division one baseball player, you know, getting that shot to be um, that relief pitcher, that go-to pitcher when in a tight moment, you know, you have to be mentally prepared to, to, to get through that, you know, um, you know, you have your team behind you, but you're on the mound and, and you got to get the job done. And, uh, you know, like you said, everything physical, you can put, you know, you can do all the lifting you, you can do, you can do all the, um, stretching and the flexibility and the trainers and, uh, yoga and everything. But if you get up there and, you're not mentally honed in on, on what needs to do and taking that deep breath and getting refocused and knowing it's just one pitch at a time, it'll break you down. Absolutely. And I think you said it perfectly. So Frank, I just want to thank you so much for being here with me today and uh, being able to give, give other athletes uh, information about the mental performance, uh, mental performance, coaching, mental performance skills, and um, you know, being vulnerable and being able to discuss it and how it's helped you and, and how it's really changed your, your game. So I, I totally appreciate you being here with me today. Of course. Yeah. Thank, thank you for giving me the opportunity and I appreciate it. Take care. Thanks.